Well, this is certainly one of the most beloved weekends of the year for staff because we get to see the village come alive with all the activities, games, and contests happening up and down the village streets. As many of you may know, the Genesee Country Village Museum is a not-for-profit charitable organization. Many of our programs are only made possible through funding from corporate sponsors, private donors, and grants. So please help me thank our corporate sponsors, Tompkins Bank of Castile, and City Newspaper for their generous donations and support for this event. I'm offering them a round of applause. So thank you again to Tompkins Bank of Castile and City Newspaper. Well, today's presentation will include approximately 30 minutes of storytelling and reminiscing from one of the stars of Little House on the Prairie television series. At that point, we'll open up the floor to all of you to answer some questions. Then at 2 o'clock, our guest star will be signing autographs in the town hall, over to my right. Uh, and please be sure to stop by to buy tickets for the autograph sessions uh, in the canvas fly uh, right there in front of the town hall. And now, without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce you to you, museum's special guest. Of course, you may know her better as Mary Ingalls, Ms. Melissa Anderson.
flying into a rage when a crew member dares to flinch in that actor's uh, eye line while, whilst he is emoting, I cringe. I learned well on Little House. We did not behave that way. I was proud that I could ignore distractions even while portraying someone who couldn't see. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. As I read the script, uh-oh. I think I lost my mic. Come back. Um, <laughs> as I read the script then and watch the episodes now, I am reminded of all the new things I had to learn to be able to pull this off. I visited the Foundation for the Junior Blind in Los Angeles and worked with teachers there. We also had one of the teachers come to the set for those two episodes in case any technical questions came up. They told me that a blind person will typically shuffle her feet when she walks until she learns how to use a cane to know what obstacles might be in front of her. Understandable when you think about it. If you really didn't know where you were going, you'd, walk, you'd be walking very tentatively. Also, they told me to use my outstretched arm in front of me to feel ahead for obstacles. Again, that wouldn't be necessary once, once, one, used to learn, once one learned to use a cane. Easy for me to say. The cane taps the ground and moves from side to side in front of the user. When one, leg, when one leg steps forward, the cane is swept in front of the opposite leg to check for ob obstacles before that foot steps out. In the blind school on Little House, we had chair rails along all of the walls so that the students could easily find their way around the hallway. One scene early in part two is particularly heartbreaking. Mary is told to unpack and is carefully shuffling around her room, feeling her way to a bureau for her clothes. As she puts her bag down, her hand raises a mirror. How terrible for a teenage girl not to be able to look at herself in the mirror. I learned that the eyes of someone who has recently lost their sight but was once able to see will appear more focused than the eyes of someone who was born blind. If the eyes have once learned to focus, they will often appear to be focused, even if they are unable to see. The teachers explained that that was why so, so often we, we so often see the blind wearing dark glasses. They may be self-conscious about how their eyes look. It's really our lack of understanding and lack of knowledge that makes us sometimes feel uncomfortable around people who happen not to be able to see. The more I learned, the more I could open my mind and become, accept and become more accepting and understanding of people with any kind of disability. We tend to be afraid of what we don't know, and I'm glad our show helped to dispel some of those feelings. I learned that when a newly blind person sits in a chair, she will almost always sit on her hands. She wants to make sure that that, chair, that that chair seat is there, of course. I learned how to pour liquid into a cup by putting my index finger of one hand just over the edge and into the top of the cup for glass. That way, when you pour, you know when to stop. We have a scene in part two that shows Mary learning how to eat by using a clock system. Each food group is placed specifically on the plate at invisible hours of the clock. For example, the peas will be at 3 o'clock, while the meat might be at 7 o'clock, etc. Pretty ingenious, I thought. One thing I learned was that, and that was most helpful to me, was that when I was playing Blind Mary, I had to react to noises and voices in a completely new way. If I was playing Sighted Mary, and I heard a crash to my right, I would snap my head toward that sound. But even before my head could turn, my eyes would be there first. Now that I was blind, my eyes would always follow. So if someone across the room talked to me, my head would move and my eyes would follow. That was probably the most difficult thing for me. It never got any easier. I always had to concentrate to do this, but I believe my hard work paid off. I, I really thought I looked convincing on screen. I actually received many letters from blind people who thought that I, Melissa Anderson, had gone blind and that the producers had written that into our show. Now that's a compliment. I also received letters from blind people telling me what a good job I had done. They watched the show and along with their sighted friends and relatives critiqued my performance. How honored, how honored I felt to get these letters of endorsement. I worked so hard perfecting this performance that I found myself acting blind during, during the first rehearsal of The Love Boat, which was my first time shooting something different since my character on Little House went blind. Luckily, no one else noticed. We have scenes in part two where you see Mary learning to write using a ruler to keep the lines straight, and also learning to read Braille. I had to learn to look as if I had mastered reading and could do it with both hands. I practiced this a lot. Obviously, I couldn't really read Braille that, or couldn't really read Braille that fast, but I managed to make it look pretty good. A poignant moment in this episode is when Mary finally realizes that her teacher, Adam, is also blind. 
she was so self-involved at first and then working so hard to learn that she just never stopped to think that her teacher might be just like her. When Adam asks her what she looks like, she realizes that he's never seen her either. Aw, oh, really, so sweet. Toward the end of the episode, Mary announces that she'll be going to Winoka in Dakota Territory with Adam to open a new school for the blind there. She and Adam have fallen in love and Mary will be a teacher just like she and Ma had always planned. Charles and Carolyn decide to follow them to Winoka because times are so hard in Walnut Grove and they feel that the family needs a new start. In the final scene, Mary speaks to her church congregation at Walnut Grove and leads them in prayer, which she, realize, which she reads from her Braille Bible. I was surprised and happy to see that they froze the frame on my face at the very end. It was a really nice way to end this ultra-dramatic two-part episode. So that's, that's that. But now um, I was wondering if there might be any little like budding, budding actors or actresses in the audience that might want to uh, come up and read a scene from my book with me. Um, so um, there's a there's a fun scene in the beginning where where I get to meet Mike Landon for the first time. So I would need I would need a boy that could play Mike Landon and a girl that could play uh, my mother. So if anyone wants to do that, you want to come up? Sure. Okay, and I need, I still need a boy. Are there any boys here? <laughs> sure. All right. Hi, what's your name? Hi everybody, this is Rachel. Hey, I'm Ed Sam.